I spent almost two years of my cybersecurity career working on a sim. What does that mean? Well, in my last role at Datadog, I was a detection engineer or security engineer or threat detection engineer, whatever you want to call it, on the cloud sim product at Datadog. I spent a lot of time working on research and finding ways by which attackers exploit vulnerabilities within different environments from cloud environments to endpoints to SaaS applications to networks and different things, tools and platforms that organizations use for their IT systems, cloud systems and security systems. And what I did was I applied the feedback of the research I found into creating detection rules within a platform called a SIM, a security information and event management system. And the SIM helped customers identify threats within their environments in real time. Now, I no longer work at that company doing threat detection stuff. I work at a different company doing instant response. But I decided to make this video as a quick introduction to what a SIM is and help you guys understand how SIMs work and and what exactly is the purpose of a SIM. Today, we'll be diving into the Triac Me Room introduction to SIM and going over a couple of tasks there to understand the world of security, information, and event management. Let's get right into the video. All right, what is SIM? What is SIM? SIM stands for Security Information and Event Management. It's a tool that collects data from various endpoints, network devices across the network, stores them at a centralized place, and performs correlation on them. This room will cover the basic concept required to understand SIM and how it works. So some of the learning objectives covered in this room are, what is a SIM? And we can see what it is here. How does it work? Why is SIM needed? What is the network visibility? And what are log sources and how is log ingestion done? What are the capabilities a SIM provides? And what does a SIM stand for? It stands for security, information, and event management. Let's see what I miss here. Security, information, and event management. I guess you have to have the system. Okay. There we go. All right, let's look at what network visibility is. So before explaining the importance of SIM, let's first understand why it's critical to have better visibility of all the activities within a network. The image below shows an example of a simple network that comprises multiple Linux Windows based endpoints or Linux or Windows based endpoints, one data server and one website. Each component communicates with the other or accesses the internet through a router. So we have 20 Linux workstations, 50 Windows workstations. We have the router, we also have the data server, the web server, and the internet, which is allowing us access through the router. As we know, each network component can have one or more log sources generating different logs. One example could be setting up Sysma. And Sysma, by the way, is the system monitor in Windows. And it's basically a driver developed by Microsoft that is designed to monitor and log various events happening within a Windows system. So Setting up six, so setting up Sysmon along with Windows event logs to have better visibility of Windows endpoint. We can divide our network log sources into two logical parts. The first one is the host centric log source. These are log sources that capture events that occurred within or related to the host. Some log sources that generate host centric logs are Windows event logs, Sysmon, OS query, and some example of those host centric logs are say someone accessing a file, someone attempting to authenticate, process execution activity, and process add-in, editing, deleting a registry cure value or PowerShell execution. And a lot of these things are typically registered through Windows Windows event codes, specifically, you know, for Windows. And, you know, with Windows, it's where you actually have the registry. And then the second log source is the network centric log sources. So these are network related logs that are generated when the hosts communicate with each other or access the internet to a visit a website. So some network based protocols are SSH, VPN, HTTP or HTTPS, FTP. And some example of such events are SSH connection. By the way, if you're not familiar with SSH, uh, SSH stands for the secure shell, which refers to a cryptographic network protocol call used in secure communication between devices. So what SSH does is it essentially encrypts data using cryptographic algorithms such as uh, AES, which is uh, advanced encrypt systems and is often used when logging in remotely to a computer or server. This is typically used with Linux, uh, but you know, SSH is pretty ubiquitous, you know, especially if you're if you work in cybersecurity or, or technology in general. So a file being accessed via FTP is also another network centric log source. And FTP is a protocol that's designed to help efficiently transfer for files between different systems, even if they're non-compatible. Also, you have web traffic. It's also considered a network-centric log source. You have a user accessing your company's resource through a VPN. If you're not familiar with a VPN, a VPN is a virtual 
private network that essentially creates a secure tunnel between two different networks. So for example, with TriAgme here, you use a VPN to access their private network on which the machines they're going to be using operate on. And VPNs are typically used uh, for an employee to log into their workplace when they're not on site. So for example, sometimes when I work from home or when I'm traveling for work or business related matters, I can use a VPN to connect to my company's corporate or internal network. And these VPNs are also used where networks uh, don't provide encryption. So like coffee shops, like airports and some you know, local places where, you know, some of their internet connections are not encrypted. And it's a great way of preventing other people from reading your network traffic, which is essentially why it's a virtual private network. Finally, you have the network file sharing activity. Of course, obviously in the name, it's a network centric log source. Now, why is the SIM important? It's important because there are different devices, you know, hundreds of devices or millions of devices sometimes generating hundreds of events per second. So examining those logs on each device one by one in the case of an incident can be very tedious. This is one of the advantages of having a SIM solution in place. It not only logs from the various sources, so it doesn't just collect the logs in real time, but it also provides the ability to correlate between different events, search through the logs, investigate incidents and respond promptly. And some key features provided by a SIM are 1. Real-time log ingestion, alerting against abnormal activities, 24-7 monitoring and visibility, that is if your, you know, SIM platform stays, you know, up all the time, protection against the latest threats through early detection, data insights and visualization, ability to investigate past incidents. So as you can see here, the first step is to collect the data sources, aggregate the data, discover and detect threats, so the process of querying and trying to correlate different uh, parts of the data or different data point to create a story behind what, what might have happened in an attack. And then finally, you know, you use that data they've correlated and investigated and queried uh, to identify breaches and investigate alerts. So the first question here is, is the registry related activity host centric or network centric? Registry related activity is host centric because this is related to the host in this case. Finally, is VPN host centric or network centric? VPN is network centric because you're connecting to a virtual private network. All right. Next, let's understand log sources and log ingestion. Every device in the network generates some kind of log whenever an activity is performed on it, like a user visiting a website, connecting to SSH, logging into his workstation, and so on. Some devices that are found in a network environment are discussed below. Let's start with the Windows machine, which is very, very popular. As a matter of fact, right now, I'm actually recording this video on a Windows machine. Windows records every event that can be viewed through the event viewer utility. It assigns a unique ID to each type of log activity, making it easy for the analyst to examine and keep track of. To view events in a Windows environment, type event viewer in the search bar and it takes you to the tool where different logs are, are stored and can be viewed as shown below. These logs from all Windows endpoints are forwarded to the SIM solution for monitoring and better visibility. Next, we have our Linux workstation, Linux. If you're not familiar with Linux, let's go over what Linux is. Linux is a command line operating system based on Unix, and there are multiple operating systems that are based on Linux. That's what Linux is, <laughs> simply. But there's a lot more to Linux. Let's look at it. So Linux OS stores all the related logs, such as events, errors, warnings, and so on, which are then ingested into SIM for continuous monitoring. So the common locations where Linux stores logs are var log httpd, which contains HTTP requests, responses, and error logs. If you're not familiar with HTTP, let's look at what it is. So HTTP is the hypertext transfer protocol, and it's the protocol that specifies how a web browser and a web server can communicate. So your web browser requests content from, say, for example, this site, the TriAgme web server, using the HTTP protocol as you go through this room. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this video on YouTube on you know your browser, using the HTTP protocol to actually communicate with YouTube's web server to serve you the video you're watching right now. And if you want to watch it in a more secure manner, that would be HTTPS. So that's what HTTP is. And those logs contain requests and response. So when you make a request to a server, you're basically asking the server for information. And the response is what the server gives back to you as a response based off the request you made to that server. So client and server communication right there. Next, we have the var log cron folder, which logs events related to cron jobs. Next, we have the var log cron folder, which stores uh, events related to cron jobs. So cron jobs essentially help you automate tasks uh, within the Linux OS. Next is the var log auth.log and var log secure and these store authentication events related to the Linux OS. Finally, you have the var log kern, which is which stores kernel related events. 
So here's an example of a cron log. So it looks like here, this started with log level notice, no timestamp found, no timestamp found, unable to exec, exec this, and then current output for this to dev now. So it looks like whatever cron job was set failed here because it says it was unable to exec that, and then it it, it outputted whatever it is to dev now, which is basically no, which is basically empty. All right, finally, we have the web server, right? And you know, for context, we're looking at different log sources and log ingestion. Before we go into what the web server, a lot, a lot of web servers are actually Linux servers. So you kind of see some similarities between the logs you might find on the web server and a Linux server, especially if it gets compromised because you're essentially going to have a Linux server on the back end, but you most likely would have more HTTP related information within a web server or web related uh, authentication details uh, within a web server. So it is important to keep an eye on all the requests and responses coming in and out of the web server for any potential web attack. In Linux, common locations to write all Apache related logs are var log Apache or var log HTTPD. So here's an example of Apache logs. So right here, you can see a get request made to this particular endpoint using HTTP 1.0, which is a version of HTTP. And finally, the request had a 200 status code, which means it was successful. And this is from the one the 168, the 21, the 200 IP address, and this is when it happened. Same thing here. This is from the loopback address that shows a get, re get request to a you know empty directory here. So next thing we have is log ingestion. All these logs provide a wealth of information and can help in identifying security issues. Each SIM solution has its own way of ingesting the logs. Some common methods used by the SIM solutions are explained below. So the first method is the agent forwarder. So basically, SIM solutions that use the agent forwarder method provide a lightweight tool called an agent agent or a forwarder used by Splunk and that gets installed on the endpoint and is configured to capture all the important logs and send them to the SIM server. So you would have a dedicated server for your SIM and then you install a software or some tool called an agent on your endpoint and that agent collects all the data from your endpoint, all the logs from different directories, and then forwards that data from your endpoint to your SIM server, right, over a specific port. So I think Splunk is like 889 or something like that. I forget what it was. Next is Syslog. Syslog is a widely used protocol to collect data from various systems like web servers, databases, and so on, and are sent real-time data to the centralized destination. Third, we have the manual upload. So some SIM solutions like Splunk and Elk allow users to ingest offline data for quick analysis. And once data is ingested, it is normalized and made available for analysis. This is actually really, really cool. Sometimes like if you want to do like CTFs or you want to do like some ad hoc, like, you know, investigations or you want to do some incident response, you just want to like download some, you know, CSV files or some JSON log files, you just upload them to the SIM and then you're able to analyze them ad hoc without having to have logged that data from the SIM in real time. You could have just downloaded that data from whatever device it is, converted it to whatever format, and then just upload it to the system like Splunk, for example, and then you can just start analyzing that data there. Finally, you have port forwarding, and some solutions can also be configured to listen on a certain port, and then the endpoints forward the data to the SIM instance on the listening port. This is somewhat similar to the agent forwarder method, uh, but with the agent for or forwarder method, you have an actual agent, a tool running you know, in the background and sending that data over a specific port to your SIM server. An example of how Splunk provides various methods for log ingestion is shown below. So you can either upload from your computer, you can monitor, right? And then you can forward using a Splunk forwarder. So let's answer the question below. In which location within a Linux environment are HTTP logs stored? I think this was var log HTTPD. Awesome. All right, we just looked at the very first three tasks in the introduction to SIM from TryHackMe. And we looked at network visibility through the SIM. We looked at different log sources and different log ingestions. In the next video, we'll be looking at why do we use a sim, we'll also be looking at analyzing logs and alerts, and also doing some labs to actually get our hands dirty with sim in this use case. So thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video where we continue on this particular series. Bye-bye.